<laughs> Save this pictograph? Yes. Hey everybody, peeps here, and happy Zelda month! Move this man! Look, I may be a little late, I've been trying to make lots of videos on this channel, and I'm looking at a different video that I It may only be one video and it may be late, but it is a little bit longer than normal and it's on one of my favorite Zelda games ever. The, the Wind Waker. Specifically, the Wind Waker HD for the Wii U version. Can you see it? No. So I'm pretty excited about it. Again, I decided to play the HD version this time. So later on in the video, we'll go over some of the changes that were made, uh, including one of the ones that everybody wanted that made the game way better. Selfie cam. As a kid, I was so excited for this game. I don't think I had ever been that excited for anything in my life to that point, and to be honest, I probably haven't been since. I would watch the trailer with my parents' slow dial-up internet literally one second at a time. I didn't even care! That's how excited I was to play this. But not everyone felt that way. There were many who scoffed at the cartoony, cel-shaded graphics, for they had SEEN the GameCube Zelda Space World demo from the year 2000 that looked a little bit more like this. And people were really excited about that. And then they got this. But, I have something to say in response to those people. And what I have to say is... Um. Nah, uh You're dumb. This game is awesome. We'll talk about it like more in the videos. We'll talk about it. Just don't click off the video. Like, subscribe, and send me a thousand dollars in the mail. <laughs> At least do two of the three of those. Uh, preferably the thousand dollar one. All right, it's time to start the adventures of PPPs, Hero of Winds. Oh, great PPPs. Uh. That's THE great PV peeps? For fuck's sake, get this guy out of my face! <laughs> and since the great PV peeps is a hero, obviously we have to play on hero mode, exclusive to the HD version. Something I can't say I've ever done in this game, at least not all the way through, so it should be fun. The thing that stands out the most with Wind Waker is naturally the cel shaded graphical style. While it was controversial at the time it came out, I feel like it's not really anymore. I mean, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, I guess, but I feel like it's near universally loved by Zelda fans now, and how could it not be? Even the original game has aged so well, and the remake, everything just looks so good. I know a lot of people complain about the bloom effects in this version. There's always this kind of weird haze around the characters and stuff like that. And I do think I prefer the original game uh, upscaled to like 1080p on a dolphin or something. Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> but I do think the Wii U game looks really good also, so you're not gonna hear a lot of complaints about it from me. I should say everything looks good except the soup. I mean, what the heck is this? Especially compared to the soup in Link's Awakening HD. Th th this is just pathetic. At least you can actually drink the soup in this game though. I'm still pretty pissed about that. Link's Awakening HD for the Nintendo Switch. Why'd they make the soup look so good and not let you eat it? I have very strong opinions about Zelda soup, okay? That soup looks so good, I'd put it on my wall. Or I guess I could try Displate, the sponsor of this video. Are your walls blank? Well, listen up! I love having my room decorated. It makes me feel happy, it makes me feel creative, it makes me want to make stuff. But posters are a huge pain. They get creases on them, they rip, especially if you're moving. But Displate is different. Instead of that plasticky paper material, Displate is made of metal sheets with super high quality prints on them. And they're amazingly easy to hang up with the help of a magnet, no additional tools required. I've known of Displate from other content creators I watch for a long time now, and they've grown a lot. In fact, they have so many amazing designs that it's essentially impossible that you won't find something you like on there. You may notice a lot of stuff inspired by my favorite video game franchise, like a lot of cool stuff from my favorite video game franchise, but there's also officially licensed stuff like Star Wars, Elden Ring, Warcraft, Fallout, and my other favorite series, The Elder Scrolls. I've gone through their extensive catalog and picked out my personal favorites, and you can check out my picks for yourself by using my personalized link in the description below. And you can use my discount code! That'll activate once you click on the link and add your displays to your cart. But my discount is only valid for a limited time, so act fast. So why not decorate your space with displays from art from some of your favorite franchises, from artists from across the world. And in the process, you can help out me and my channel a lot by doing so. Really appreciate it. Again, check out my personal favorites for the link in the description below. And thanks again to Displate for sponsoring this video. Anyone want to clean this up?
Since it has a cartoony look, you can tell more emphasis was put on humor, and there's actually some pretty funny bits in the cutscenes. Of course, there's Link emotionally waving to his family and friends as he sets off on a voyage to save his recently kidnapped sister. I love you. I love you, Grandma. <laughs> How much longer is this going to go on, do you think? Do you have an estimate? Uh, the estimate is forever? He will keep doing this forever, as long as you don't press the A button. There's the classic bait-and-switch moment when you bring the pearls to the goddess statue. I guess everything's safe now. In other Zelda games, if Link falls, he makes this beefy, heavy smack sound. But in Wind Waker, he just goes... His body sounds like it was made of jello. <laughs> I wasn't watching her sleep. I did not hack the game, by the way. This is an actual screenshot. I absolutely love the jarring difference between the spirits in this game versus the following Zelda Twilight Princess. In that game, they're these giant light gods, almost like biblical angels that you can barely even look at, much less comprehend their form and majesty. Oh, please, great Lanero. Don't go into my mind. Not the dreams. Not the dreams. <laughs> And in Wind Waker, you just got this goopy-looking fish in a cave. <laughs> Since the game is so cartoony and funny, I think it holds the world record for most weird characters in a video game ever. In fact, I should probably thank Wind Waker for almost single-handedly launching my YouTube career, since the first video that ever really took off for me was my Top 10 Weirdest Zelda Characters video, and like half the characters in that list are from this game. I could probably have added even more, to be honest. First off, there's Beetle, who I've talked about in the past. <coughs> and the skull! Yes, it appears that he's a serial killer, but more importantly, he screwed me over personally. He has a reward program to receive a complimentary ID. Well, I never actually bothered to get it before, so I finally did it this time, and what does it get you? Hi. 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 You serious? Of course, there's a bunch of other weird characters that I've talked about a lot in older Zelda videos. There's Tot, who dances literally 24 hours a day, every day. Oh! Salvatore, who despite appearing to hate his job, is also very dedicated to the role. Hooray! Yay! Zunari, whose whole business plan for his store he set up is basically, you do it. Do my store? Uh, like, you wanna, you wanna do my, you wanna do my store? Like, uh, maybe just, like, go out there and, like, uh, maybe do all, all of my store? I'll give you a golden statue of myself. Yay. <laughs> and, of course... There's Tingle. Could Tingle be a mass murderer? Yes. Moving on. I mean, yeah, I actually think he is. I think that's uh, kind of canon in the game. The version of Tingle in the Wind Waker is an actual criminal. I mean, he's literally in jail. <laughs> so, but also other stuff. He's a bad guy. He's a bad dude, all right? I wasn't making it up. But there's plenty of other weird Zelda characters that I've never even really talked about before. There's the creepy Picto Box guy whose entire side quest involves spying on people and taking incriminating pictures of them without their consent. So there's this guy who's sad and lonely, go take a picture of him being sad and lonely. Okay. <laughs> go scare the shit out of somebody and take a picture of it. Okay. <laughs> go take a picture of these guys making out. Okay. Then he says he's gonna use the pictures most efficiently. I'm not sure I want to know what that means. Then there's this ho-ho guy who pops up in the most random places and does nothing but look through his telescope and go, ho-ho, frightening. He just yells his own name and then shouts things. Austin, hungry! <laughs> Can you get off my island, by the way? Who said you could be here? I'm gonna call the Wind Waker police. I want this man arrested. And lastly, a very underrated weird character, the Fish Man. Or is it Fish Men? I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of different ones. They just all look the same and they're all called Fish Man. This freaky looking fish with a human face that freaking talks. He's also a very skilled cartographer somehow, despite being a fish that has no hands. Never let your differences hold you back. Believe to achieve. Yeah. 
I only have a partially functioning brain, and that never stopped me from becoming the 15,000th, 102nd most popular YouTuber on the planet. The whole being a fish and having no hands thing aside, how does he know what the islands look like? It's not like he can see them from down there in the ocean. He also knows way too much, not only giving information about islands in the world, but even details about the personal lives of the people living there. He's even apparently spying on children. That's uh, pretty sussy, Mr. Fishman, not gonna lie. Big yikes alert. Also, I never noticed this before, but apparently he's Jillian, the lady in this uh, milk bar's ex-boyfriend. I don't, I don't really know, like, uh, like, uh, what that is, that is about. But uh, it's that's that's it. It's that's the thing. It's in, it's in the game. He even seems to have some kind of history with the King of the Red Lions too. That's never explained. He's always talking about uh, stuff to him in secret. Like, uh, uh, maybe, like, maybe you can let let me in on some of this information. I'm the one out here doing everything. But now, just go ahead and talk to this stupid fish. But by far the weirdest thing about him is his mini game this guy practically begs you to shoot him <laughs> Ah, oh, that hit the spot that completely cured my sick neck. Oh, harder, daddy. Ah. And he gets mad at you if you miss. <laughs> He's a freaking pervert. Way to go, senpai. I mean, small fry. Then he pays you 200 bucks. 200 rupees? 200 rupees? I don't want your dirty money, dude. Oh my God, I feel gross, man, sick. I insinuated in my Twilight Princess video a couple years back that the Fairy Queen in Wind Waker is not creepy. Well, I don't know what the heck I was talking about because she's the scariest fairy in the entire series. It's really not even close. The great fairies are pretty normal as far as big scary fairies go, but the Fairy Queen? You are just my type. <laughs> no, I don't want it, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on to the next segment. Hold up! You thought you were gonna get away with it, Gonzo, in your 32 different cutscenes and insinuate you have a crush on Tetra, who's like 12? You know, with your cunning and Miss Tetra's smarts, if you two got married and had a kid. <laughs> what the f is this? Gonzo, more like Gonzo to prison. There are some characters in Wind Waker that aren't weird. I know that's hard to believe. For example, two of the best characters in the entire game, Medley and Makar. The two characters in the game that are eventually revealed to be sages, and they even accompany you in their respective dungeons, as well as on your boat on the way to the dungeons, which I always got a kick out of. First off, Medley! What? You thought I was gonna throw her into the wall? You sick freak! I would never do that to Medley. Medley has been one of my favorite characters ever since the game came out when I was a kid. In fact, my very first Zelda month shirt back in the day was of me and Medley. I mean, uh, Med... Medlo. Medlo. That's an original character, non-copyrighted. Non Look, Medley, we need you. You're vital to this mission. Here's what I'm gonna need you to do. Shut the ah! f up and do whatever this weird kid says. Okay. PP peeps protect Medley. Me do it. Medley protect PP peeps though? No, I don't think so. Uh, no. She's not gonna be doing too much, just trust me. The follower AI is, uh... Zelda, come on. Zelda. De Zelda. Zelda. Zelda! Zelda! But despite the minor annoyances of having to babysit them, I really do love the Medley and Makar dungeons. What I don't love, though, is when enemies attack them. <laughs> How dare you attack Medley! Die! Only I can hurt Medley! <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Um, she's fine. Then there's Makar, who I feel gets a bit overshadowed by Medley when it comes to cute Zelda characters that everyone loves. But just look at him! He's freaking adorable! I love all the Koroks, to be honest. And the way they float down on their little leaf helicopters always reminds me of the maple seeds that fall around this time of year. Or at least this time of year when I wrote that. <laughs> Not anymore, it's snowing outside. Their little walk animations are particularly cute, although I do feel like with the right editing, the spazzy movements might be kind of terrifying. <laughs> You can't really talk about likable, non-weird Wind Waker characters without bringing up Tetra, who sails around the ocean seas with her bands of pirates and her first mate, Mr. 
freaking pervert weirdo guy over here. But don't worry, they may be pirates, but that's where he's a good guy. I mean, she tied up this shop owner dude and robbed him and left him for dead without any breathing holes, so he will slowly suffocate to death all alone by himself. But she saw a link up there and did a wink and she came to save all those girls and only took the credit and glory and all the cash rewards and didn't give any to me, even though I was the only one who actually did anything and I killed the big giant bird guy thing and played Wii Sports Tennis with the big floaty sword man, but you know, I'm not salty or anything. I love that you also can't help this guy. The game forces you to just leave him there. Wait, hold on. I've got an idea. Yeah, didn't work. Yeah, I'll just pick these up for you, but yeah. Tetra is funny, likable, competent. Uh, that's what we were talking about, in case you forgot. And it even turns out that she's Princess Zelda! Congratulations, you're Zelda! Now stay here forever and make sure you don't do anything too interesting. Oh yeah, and there's no bathroom down here, sorry about that. We've talked about the visual style of the game. We've talked about some funny stuff in the game. We've even talked about some of the characters in the game. Well, how about we talk about the game play of the game. People ask me all the time, Peeves, I'm new to Zelda. What Zelda game should I play first? I don't know. Get out of my house! If you really care about the story and the timeline, then maybe Ocarina of Time, since a lot of the game's stories revolve around that one. Otherwise, I usually recommend Wind Waker. It's colorful, it's fun, and it's easy to get into because it is the easiest Zelda game in the series. Since it's easy, it may be nice for new players to get into, but as a veteran Wind Waker player at this point, the fact that it's so easy is one of my two biggest complaints about the game. That other complaint being similar in nature, the combat. Other than Breath of the Wild, none of the Zelda games have complex combat systems, but I don't really mind that specifically. In Ocarina of Time, for example, if you get into a big fight, you just see target and wait for an opening to strike. It's simple, but it's fun, and it can even feel kind of tense at times, depending on the situation or how many hearts you have left. Majora's Mask is also similar to Ocarina of Time, and you can also shoot your bow on top of a Pona, which is pretty sick. In Twilight Princess, you get a whole bunch of cool sword techniques. In Wind Waker, you wait for the A button to pop up. <laughs> It looks kind of cool, but it feels almost unearned to me. Like I did this awesome move, but I barely did anything. And when fighting smaller enemies, especially before you get the Master Sword, you spend a lot of time just waiting for them to stand back up after you knock them down. Being able to do the Smash Brothers down B attack like you can do in Twilight Princess in this game would really do wonders for the combat in my opinion. And once you do get the Master Sword, you don't even have to wait. You just mow right through almost anything mindlessly. It doesn't come close to ruining the game for me, but I do feel like it is worth mentioning. I also remember seeing in trailers back in the day that you could pick up enemy weapons. I thought that would be really cool. But unfortunately in practice, it goes more like this. I just feel like there's never any moment where you'd be better off using an enemy weapon over your own sword. Like if you're fighting these big scaly guys, it seems like you could pick up their heavy mace and bash them with it and it'd be super effective. But as per the usual, reality is disappointing. I think he's dead, honey. You can only learn one extra sword move from Orca on Outset Island where you spin around for a long period of time. And it's funny, but it's not really practical to use. My man's over here bawling, legitimately weeping because he taught us a sword move that's only useful like two times in the entire game. Luckily, there's some other items like the bow, which is really fun to aim, especially with the gyro on the Wii U. Oh, that feels good. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. The boomerang, which is super effective against a lot of different kinds of enemies. The classic hook shot from the N64 games is back. Floating around on the Deku Leaf is fun and relaxing. The telescope is there. And after revisiting Breath of the Wild last year for a Zelda month video, it's been kind of refreshing to use all these classic Zelda items again. Speaking of the Deku Leaf, I always thought it was weird that the Deku Tree, uh... <laughs> does whatever that it was. I didn't like that too much. The bow, the hook shot, the bombs and all that are pretty self-explanatory, I think. But what is up with the boomerang in this game? Like, how are you hitting all these different targets with it all at once and then it just comes right back to you? In Twilight Princess, I guess you can justify targeting multiple things because it has some kind of enchanted 
wind god thing living inside of it, uh, I guess. But in Wind Waker, it's just a regular ass boomerang. Like this, is, like, this is not how boomerangs work. But it's fun, so. Who cares, I guess. I especially like it on the Forbidden Woods boss, chopping off all his little tentacle things while he pops his frickin' popcorn, or whatever that stuff is supposed to be. But the item that stood out the most to me while replaying this time was weirdly the pear? First of all, these are the sweatiest looking pears I have ever seen. They look like they're about to have a panic attack. <laughs> but more importantly, how exactly are these things supposed to work? I never really put any thought into it before now. The seagulls eat the pear, and then Link can control them through some kind of psychic pear powers. Oh man, I wish I had PPP. Psychic pear powers. Oh man, he got me. Uh, I really didn't want to be dead. Link is very inconsiderate, I have to say. He just sends these birds off on a suicide mission just so he could get a heart piece or some rupees or something. <laughs> part of the game, exploring the ocean seas, the adventure. I won't spoil any of my favorite islands, just in case there's people who haven't played the game yet, but I will spoil the worst ones. The top three worst Zelda Wind Waker islands. Number three, Crescent Moon Island. It's just a crescent shaped rock with two blue chews and a treasure chart chest. Oh yeah, and Ho-Ho's also here. He's gonna tell you about something really cool that you can do, just as long as you leave Crescent Moon Island. Island. There is absolutely nothing cool on Crescent Moon Island. <laughs> Number two, Five Star Isle. I don't even have footage of this one. It's five rocks. That's it. it. Sucks. Number three, Seven Star Isle. It's the same thing as the last one, except there's seven rocks now. And that's it. Oh, but wait, you can use a pair to fly overhead to see from a different angle that it's just seven rocks. And that's it. As I mentioned at the start of the video, obviously we're playing the HD version for the Wii U and there's a lot of big changes in this version compared to the original GameCube game. If I have a bias at all towards remakes and remasters, it's probably to be faithful to the original and have less changes. But if I'm being honest, there's some changes in this game that especially for most people are a huge improvement. For one thing, just having most of the HUD on the gamepad and being able to switch out items on the fly is huge. And admittedly, it's kind of hard to go back to pausing every time to switch items after you get used to it. Starting with a bigger wallet is nice. There's some subtle gameplay changes like being able to turn mid-air with a grappling hook. And the Wind Waker's beat only starting when you conduct the first note is actually super helpful, especially for new players. Obviously, the swift sail, which makes you go like double speed on the ocean, is big for a lot of people. I'm personally kind of conflicted on it. Part of me kind of likes the slower sailing, even though I don't know why. I guess I just don't want to be in a rush all the time. Sailing slow is just so peaceful and nice and can use your imagination and adventure. Adventure, yeah. And it gives me some spare time to drink my Metamucil. What? I need it, okay? God, you are so judgmental. But at the same time, I gotta finish this video, let's go! But either way, it's an optional upgrade, so you can always not get it or just not use it if you really want to. Another big change was the Tingle Bottle, where you could leave messages in a bottle for other players to find, which replaced the GameCube's Tingle Tuner with the Game Boy Advance Link cables. It's kind of a shame that this change was made in hindsight, because now that the Miiverse is down, you can't even use the Tingle Bottle stuff anymore. But we'll always remember in our hearts all the great posts and cute art, as well as all the incoherent ramblings from three-year-olds drooling all over their older brother's Wii U gamepad. Halloween, or uh, excuse me, Christmas is almost upon us. Are you excited? Oh God, it's December. Oh God, I should have had this video done three weeks ago. One of my favorite changes is the addition again of hero mode, which removes all heart drops and doubles all damage taken. It helps out a bit with my complaint of the game being too easy, if only for the first few hours of the game. Until you get a couple heart pieces, you'll be seeing Link look like this a lot. It's still not that hard, still by far the easiest Zelda game in my opinion, but it kept me honest and led to some 
tense moments and even caught me off guard for a few deaths early on. At the bare minimum, it made me actually use the potion shops in the game, which I honestly can't say I ever really did before. Whoa, this place is pretty trippy, bro. Oh no, your health has declined. Grab a potion. Ah, quality, it's genuine. Grab a potion. Ah, fall off a cliff, break your spine. Grab a potion. Ah, you found the royal bloodline. Grab a potion. Ah, an empty jar, it's a sign. Grab a potion. Ah, get in a fight with a swine. Grab a potion. Ah, starting to lose your hairline. Grab a potion. Ah, step on a hidden landmine. Grab a potion. There's a couple of things that I definitely do not like about the remaster though, and I never hear anyone else talking about it. I don't like, first, the landing indicator when using the Deku Leaf. It's not a huge deal compared to the other thing, but it does annoy me. I might not be very good at landing without it. Okay, I think we can do it now. No! Ah! But I'd like the opportunity to fail. If it's so easy you can't even fail, then where's the fun in succeeding, you know? Am I wrong? But by far, the bigger problem for me is the crosshair while aiming the cannon in the boat. I really, really don't like that. Having a crosshair for aiming is just so boring. I wonder if I will hit my target. Wow, I did. I am such a great video game player. They didn't add a crosshair with the bow, which is still really fun to use. Again, especially with the Wii U's gyro controls. I always thought that using the bow was super fun because it was kind of challenging and every hit gave me a nice little dopamine hit. <laughs> and I always had that same feeling with the cannon. It was always a lot of fun to get in naval battles with the other ships and cannons on the lookout platforms and stuff. But now it's just, whoa, buddy. <laughs> Careful with that. Careful. I mean, it, it's like, dude, just point that thing like somewhere. Like, just point it somewhere else. Just like, buddy, please. I'm begging. I don't even know if this is gonna be in the video. I know a lot of people won't care about it, at least not as much as I do, but in a game that already has kind of boring combat, turning one of the most fun combat scenarios in the game into an easy, mindless, no skill point and shoot is just so disappointing to me, and it's by far the number one reason I occasionally prefer the GameCube version to the Wii U remaster. The last major change of note is the Triforce Collection quest. In the original game, after doing a few dungeons, you have to find eight Triforce charts and have everyone's favorite character Tingle decipher them for a mere 398 rupees, 3,184 rupees in total. HD version, you only have to decipher three charts, and you can find the rest on your own with the incredible chart that you also have to pay Tingle for. I personally never disliked the Triforce Collection stuff that much. I mean, it forces you to sail around and explore all the different islands, which, I mean, is basically the most fun thing about the game, in my opinion. But I think the average player will enjoy the more streamlined experience. The Dungeons! I actually don't have too much to say about them, to be honest. Similar to the rest of the game, they're well-designed, but pretty easy for the most part. My favorite favorite is probably the Wind Temple because <laughs> while I don't think they're the best in the series, the bosses are pretty solid, if not again, a bit too easy. You may be noticing a theme here. By far the best one is Mulduga, also in the Wind Temple, and he also just so happens to have the best boss track in the entire game. Hold on, let me get this right. There, perfect. <laughs> Okay, I should say the best regular boss is Mulduga because Puppet Ganon is super fun. Basically anything that forces you to use the bow and arrow in first person is great as far as I'm concerned. And the final fight with normal human Ganon is also iconic. Even if the actual setup is a tad bit goofy, it starts off pretty cool with Ganon freaking jumping you. That insane face freeze frame and then just child abuse. Shaking my head Ganon and to think I looked up to you. Oh! That was close. More child abuse. Then he picks up Link like a little rag doll, merges the Triforce pieces together, drops Link. Ah! But uh-oh, looks like he got caught slipping because the king, who is also the boat, I forgot to mention that, I guess, touches the Triforce first. Yeah, apparently apparently that's all, he, all, he, all we had to do. Just run up and touch it. That foils Ganon's otherwise perfect plan. Then he goes, um, 
Insane? Just a little bit. Just a little bit insane. You have an epic sword fight for a little while. One more selfie. A little bit more child abuse, just for good measure. And then you stab him in the head. End scene. One of the most iconic boss battles in video game history, as far as I'm concerned. And then the king just kind of shows back up. Hey, uh... I'm back. Hope I didn't miss anything. Oh, yeah, uh, we could have maybe used your help just a little bit. I need an adult! I've always considered Wind Waker to be my second favorite Zelda game after Majora's Mask, and I think after replaying it again, it still holds that spot. It's kind of funny in hindsight. The story by Zelda standards is kind of mid. The combat is not the best. The dungeons don't stand out too much. Lots of the stuff I typically love in Zelda, while still being good, doesn't excel when compared to other Zelda games. But the stuff that really carries the game and makes it feel special all these years later is the stuff that people complained about when it first came came out. The cell shaded graphics make the game timeless and really give it a kind of charm that no other Zelda game has. And people complained that the sailing was slow and boring, but it's sailing around and visiting all the different islands that makes me come back and revisit it time and time again. In fact, I'm going back on what I just said 10 seconds ago. I am officially calling it. Wind Waker is my favorite Zelda game. Replacing Majora's Mask. Sorry, Majora's Mask. Hopefully I don't regret saying this later, but I don't know. I spent quite a while making this really long video and playing all the way through the game and I still want to go back and play it again, which I don't think is something I could say about any game I've ever done a video on. By the time I'm done playing all the way through it, writing the script, finishing the video and everything, I'm pretty much done with it. But I honestly do want to boot it back up again. I want to sail around some more, I want to shoot some people with the cannon, I want to maybe finally solve that freaking slide puzzle. Wait, that was only one? There's 16? In fact, I had some kind of elaborate funny bit I was gonna end this video with, and I don't even wanna do it. I don't wanna do that. I just wanna say I freaking love The Wind Waker. And it is officially my favorite game of all time.